the thing that separates a 2600 gm from other players is the minute calculations that they indulge in and this is what i'm going to show you today in the game between abhijit gupta who was white and aniruddha deshpande so let's just have a look at this brilliant piece of calculation done by the commonwealth current commonwealth champion abhijit who is white has a nice position, his bishop is on c4 and he has a majority rolling on the king side. However, it's black to play and black went for the move knight to b6. Now, if you look at it, the knight is attacking the bishop and moving it seems like the most logical option. However, it would mean that black comes in and he starts to gain counterplay after something like let's say king f2, knight d7. Now either the knight jumps to c5 and puts pressure here or if you take on d7 then the b3 pawn is left hanging. So in either case it would not be so great. So what Apijit did in this position is that after knight b6 he defended his bishop with king d3. At first it looks like after knight takes c4, b takes c4 black has got a passed pawn and he can play rook a5 which is an excellent move and then make it a protected passed pawn with c5 so what had he thought the thing is that after rook a5 so abhijit wanted to play king c2 and after c5 he wanted to put his king to d3 in fact this is what happened in the game uh, Aniruddha thought that he would go rook a8 and get the d5 because after rook d1 he has rook d8 and if you take the rooks then after king d8 this is a drawn pawn endgame you cannot win this because uh, the b4 passer uh, stops the white king and you cannot create a passer here which will uh, win you the game but the move that was excellent was rook to d5. And the point is that after rook into d5, c into d5, white has a passer here and after something like let's say b6, he can go g5, hg, hg and after king f7, he could very well play uh, d6, king e8, f6 and g6. When these two uh, passers on D and G5 give him the win. So according to me, it was extremely important for Abhijit to see this move Rook D5 in order to go for these variations, which he did. And this is what uh, separates a super GM from normal players. The last point which I want to make and which could be of great interest for everyone is that in this position after uh, we saw knight into c4, b into c4, rook a5, when king c2 was played, white had, black had to play his uh, king to d6 and after rook d1, king to c5. Now a4 is hanging, so king b3 is a normal move. And after rook d7, black has the very nice move, uh, rook to a8. Because if rook into g7, he could go rook d8. And this is where uh, black gets all his play. He comes down to the d-file to d3 and uh, he creates a lot of pressure on, on white. And so in case you are defending such end games, uh, what Aniruddha did was he played the move c5 here, which made everything passive. Instead, he should have activated his king and then he could just go back over here and try to take the d-file later on which would have given him uh, great defensive chances.